So these are all old railway sleeper nails. This is all railway parts. I think these are probably wheels of some sort. Um, it's beautiful. So everything's been made from old railway parts. This old chain here, look at that. It's a nice piece of old wood, I'm just peppered with railway sleeper pins. There's a crankshaft over there, look. Just, whoops, just in there. Put that for an old piece of chain. They're gorgeous pieces. Old spring. That be hi, and a huge welcome to the Steve's Kitchen podcast on the road. We're on the Nullarbor, driving out from. Victoria to Perth, or from Melbourne to Perth. How many nights, Michelle, have we been on the road so far? Oh, about five, I think now, five or six. Five or six? Yeah. We've done at least five days. I think this is our sixth day of driving, and we're trying to do it in stints of about, you know, five to 600 kilometers at a time. Uh, the road we've just come along is apparently Australia's, actually the road we're on at the moment is Australia's longest straight road. It's 157 kilometers without a bend. Um, so we, we were on that for about an hour last night we were. and there wasn't a single bend in it. Now we've stopped just in the bush off of the road. Uh, we found it's best not to stop in parking places or designated parking places but to uh, find the prettier little bush. I don't know if you can hear this is a road train going by. They're a little bit like a regular truck but they've often got maybe three to four carriages long and you can hear them in the background there's a hum 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 and that one actually he's just a little one he's a little one but he's a trailer tra towing a trailer so it's a truck with a truck on top flies this morning oh wow lots of them there's one in your ear how many how many i've got on me now michelle <laughs> would you say maybe well, about, a dozen yep at least the flies in Australia and in the outback, um, they're not everywhere, but when you find a stop that's covered in flies, you are going to struggle uh, because... This is the first time we've stopped, really, they've been really too bad. Yeah, yeah. apart from at the emu farm where oh, we Oh, yeah, well, we just blame the emus for that. <laughs> but there was uh, one spot where the emus... Now, it's really beautiful where we are. It's typical bush. There are lots of sort of low shrubs around. And as I say, the Nullarbor, Nullarbor, which we're on now, which means... No trees. Is actually meant to have no trees. We're, we're actually under a tree at the moment, a little gum tree. Uh, there are very few trees on the Nullarbor and I think that's why it was named the Nullarbor. It's a pretty little uh, thrush in the tree there just flying around ahead of us. Not many mammals. We haven't seen any kangaroos other than dead kangaroos on the road. Um, no possums, no wombats. No camels. No, no camels or no emus, which is what they say You the signs I've put up and I might use that for a thumbnail actually for this podcast. They say there are emus, uh, wombats and kangaroos on this section, but we've heard a lot of people say they rarely come to the roadside unless it's raining. Uh, so you don't tend to see them. But out here in the bush, we're seeing lots of beautiful birds. We actually stopped in a place last night and met a, a South African gentleman. Yeah, he was out. What's his name again? Uh, Derek, I think. Derek, it? yeah. So Derek, is a bird watcher and he <laughs> i insulted him by calling him a twitcher he said oh you should know i'm not a twitcher i'm trying to think how his south african accent was <laughs> but anyway he said you should know i'm not a twitcher i'm a bird watcher and he'd come two and a half thousand kilometers down this road he probably came from south africa i guess originally although he's currently living in london um, but he's flown all the way around the world to see just one particular bird in this area. And I think it was called the Nurella blue-capped thrush. I 
possibly got the name wrong, but he was super excited because he's seen this bird um, about 30 kilometers off of the main road. Uh, and if you message me, really want to know where that is, I can probably tell you exactly where it is. But he was super excited. I think it was getting close to his thousandth bird that he'd spotted. So, and he was showing me the pictures and he'd set up a bush camp. He was having a glass of wine, cooking himself some dinner. And uh, we just chatted, sun was going down. It's a nice stop, wasn't it there? It was a lovely stop, no flies. No flies. And uh, the birds, you yeah, know, the birds were, were superb. Now. I can just hear in the background there a crow, about the only bird I don't like out on the Nullarbor are the crows, uh, although they do do a good job of cleaning up the roadkill. Uh, you get little flocks of crows. Now the scenery around me, it's red dirt for as far as the eye can see and small sort of shrub bushes, uh, but all different varieties. None of them are particularly the same. There are. There goes another road train, I can hear it coming. We'll just let it pass by. So as I was saying, you've got um, shrubs, little short, maybe uh, half a meter or two feet tall shrubs all over, all different colors very pretty looking little mounds of soil rising and lifting all around my feet are tiny little funnels of soil that have been dug out with little mounds around and they're probably about three inches across with quite a quite a big hole in the center about the size of a new penny and they are dug out by the ants I think they're a bull ant or a, or some sort of um, ant out here and they're peppered all over this ground where we stopped so here we've got all these many, many little ant hills or ant holes. And the ants, great big, great big ants dig. They're like bull ants. I think they're bull ants. They dig out these holes. huge great big holes. There are no ants there at the moment. Over here, some spider has set up a big, big web here. Not sure what sort of spider it is. Don't think it's a funnel web, although there is a little bit of a hole. Could be a funnel web. There is a bit of a hole there under that. I don't know if you can see just under the the branch, so it could be a funnel web. One of Australia's most poisonous or most dangerous spiders. <laughs> we actually put our tent last night on several of them, but they because they didn't bother us, did they? No, because we've got a ground sheet. Uh, they don't tend to bother you at all. Um, we put a ground sheet down first. I mean, you might say, why did we put them on? an area where there were ant holes, basically because there isn't any area uh, where there isn't ant holes, there are. But some ant holes look fresher than others, don't they? The soil is more damp, I suppose you should say, around the outside of it. They've been, you know, this morning, they've been pulling those uh, soft soils out of the sand. And where we actually stopped, we had no problem at all. We did have these flies everywhere flies 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 we quick in and out of the tent so we didn't bring any in with us and we were lucky enough we didn't so that was good and it's desert out here so at night time it gets pretty cold i'd say it's getting close to the sort of maybe it feels like freezing but it's it's getting close to maybe sort of seven or eight degrees so celsius say, yeah, uh, i'm not sure what nine. that is in fahrenheit maybe uh, one of you will comment and let me know but um cold compared to the sort of 30 40 degree uh, temperatures in the daytime but we find in the the little tent we've got this little tent that we bought many years ago in France it's a two second pop-up tent and it's um, cavity it's got uh, two la two layers to it so it's got some insulation and once we get our little mattress inside and our little doona over us we're, we're snug as a bug <laughs> snug as a bug even Michelle who does feel the cold um, we're toasty warm so it's it's nice 
I was, you were up early this morning and it was a bit cold, you said? But. Well, I was up at six o'clock this morning. It was, five, I think, 5.30 I noticed the time originally. But we have to remember we're, we're three hours different from where we set out from. So technically that was nine o'clock almost in the morning, um, local time for where we, where we were five or six days ago. So I was up at six. I uh, got up, made myself a beautiful coffee before the flies got too heavy because in the cooler hours, the flies clear off and, and, and give you a bit of peace. So I got up and made coffee uh, in the back of the car. We've got a little stovetop um, espresso maker. Uh, I think they call them a mocha pot that we bought when we were in Sicily last year. And that made perfect little espressos, didn't it? Yeah, that that's, gives us a good start to the day. We had a little bit of a fright last night. We actually um, have a, a little jerry can of fuel that we were carrying with us. And um, we knew we were a little way off, maybe about three or 400 kilometers from a, a town called Norseman where we'd be able to get fuel at a reasonable price. And we were getting low, uh, about 100 kilometers to the next um, place where we were gonna f need to fill up. But I was okay, because I had my jerry can. So when we pulled up last night, I opened the jerry can and started to pour it into the Jeep. But I noticed after about a, a, a litre or two that it seemed to be trickling out, <laughs> trickling out the bottom of the Jeep. Now, it wasn't so funny at the time, I can assure you, but uh, um, what seemed to be happening is the funnel wasn't, uh, there's a nozzle on the jerry can. It didn't seem to be going into the tank. It seemed to be back flowing uh, up to the cap and then there was a little overflow spout and it was running out there. So that started to concern me because I thought, well, we're not a long, we're not close enough to the next place to get fuel. Uh, and I was kind of relying on the jerry can. So we were, we were stressed for a little while. Just, just a little bit, for a little while. Uh, not so stressed, but I, but I went for a little walk. And whilst I was walking, I, I had, um, 3G internet connection. So I was Googling why I was having this problem with the jerry can. And somebody mentioned that under the wheel arch in the back of the Jeep, there was a small funnel that you had to use in order to refill from a jerry can because otherwise you'd never get the fuel in there. So I hurried my way back, surrounded by a sort of black swarm of flies. I think I'd collected by this time almost every fly from the bush, probably about five or 600 flies followed me back got to um, where we were camped and I said to Michelle, we need to clear the boot. We need to empty out the back half of the car. Because <laughs> we have to get into the wheel arch, into the wheel cavity and find if we've got this funnel. Um, it wasn't too difficult, we managed to do it quite. No, but everything on the driver's yeah. and passenger seat, pulled up uh, uh, the little flap that covers the wheel and inside the toolbox, remarkably, was this little white funnel in a little Ziploc parcel. And I slid that in beautifully, it just slid straight into the, uh, the fuel vent there and I could pour the rest of the fuel in. So that was uh, emergency averted. Uh, we've now got enough fuel to get us uh, comfortably to one or two more fuel stops, possibly even as far as Norseman before we need to fill up. But we'll probably- We'll probably put some in, so just to be safe. Yeah, we don't want to be caught out because now we haven't got any fuel left in the jerry can. Um, so we need to probably get uh, some fuel from one of these ludicrously expensive uh, servos along here. The servos uh, along the Nullabor, Nullabor, I do have problems saying Nullabor, um, they charge what they like really. I mean, fuel prices are about 130 a litre for unleaded fuel and they can charge up to about 190. The last one was about 190 a litre. So it's a sizable amount, but it's just something you have to take into account when you're traveling across. There are plenty of places to buy fuel, although there's often 100, maybe 200 kilometers between them. Um, but you do have to bite the bullet and buy them. There goes another road train. Now, I always thought the road trains were going to be a lot bigger out here on the Nullarbor. They're actually not as big as I expected, but they're, they're still sizable trucks. And I suspect they have quite a slow uh, braking distance or a long braking distance. I've attracted a big fly, like a mayfly, huge big thing, size of a 
sort of beetle that keeps landing on me. So we're probably going to have to call this podcast to an end. Um, I think the flies are starting to get uh, a bit of an irritant. I will talk to you in the next podcast about the world's longest golf course out here on the Nullarbor. And um, so you've that to look forward to if you join me for the next podcast. So for Michelle and I. Goodbye. Out here in Outback Australia, covered from head to foot in flies. Loved you all. Ah, that big fly is landing on my hand now. <laughs> bugger off (laughs) it wants to be part of the podcast (laughs) take care see you next time bye